Good evening. How you doing this evening? This is Minister Peyton Moore coming at you from 66 Books of Truth Ministries. I hope you all had a great week. I hope everything went fine for you. Um, God has been good. He's in the healing business. He's in the, the mending business. He's bringing people back together. Uh, people are coming back home to Christ. And I just want you to know you just keep coming no matter what stage or what level in life that you are. Um, I've been dealing with a, a person at work. Uh, he has an alcoholic problem and uh, has a great heart. He's an employee of well work and uh, he's gone through some changes in life and and I'm telling you you know some hurting people out here and they really need help and I'm talking about help. I'm serious help. Uh, people are just in this depression stage uh, people are just uh, committing uh, suicide, drug addiction. Um, they're just going through a lot in life. And this is why us as authentic Christians, we have to keep our hearts and minds open and arms open because these people need somewhere to fall. That's why I say, you know, I listened to a sermon that Pastor John Gray preached a while back and he was talking about, you know, there's no room for condemnation when somebody's coming through the church doors asking for help. That means if they're coming through the church doors, no matter who they are, what they are, what life they're, lifestyle they're living or whatever sins that they're in, these people need help. There are so many people in the church that need help and we want to not acknowledge that, you know, sometimes... Uh, as Christians, we, we put this veil over our face, but behind closed doors when we get home, it's a whole nother story. Uh, we come to church with this smile and saying everything is all right, and, and we push people away when we are hurting on the inside. So you can imagine what people are doing that's out in the world. If people are hurting in the church, you can imagine the, the, the pain and hurt that people are going through outside the world that don't know God or once knew God I want to come back home to them and don't know how uh, because of the shame and the guilt that has been put on them and the name calling and, and whatever they've been through. People have put a label on them. You are not a label when you come to Christ. You're a child of God when you come to Christ. And this is what I want to get over to let people know, you know, that don't put yourself in a box. Jesus Christ is not to be put in a box. Some people try to put Jesus in a box. They, they try to put limitations on Jesus. They try to put limitations on what he can do and the people he, he, he they, they try to limit who he could talk to and, and who he could be around and things like that. Jesus was not looking for the perfect people. Because I find this a lot in the church and outside the church, but in the church especially. All this per, 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 perfect uh, attitude that we got here. Everything is okay. Uh, I haven't done anything to anyone. Uh, people have always done things to me and, and I'm the victim and, uh, you know, and, uh, it's either I'm perfect. Everything is okay. My marriage is fine. Uh, my children are fine. Uh, everything is just going great. My job is fine. But then when you get behind closed doors, it's a whole nother story. As I say again, you don't have to be perfect to come to Christ. Christ wants you to come to him as you are. He wants you to come broken down. He wants you to come broken hearted. He wants you to come to him addicted to drugs. He wants you to come to him addicted to alcohol. He wants you to come to him in that bad marriage. He wants you to come to him in that bad relationship between your parents, your mother and your father and your children. He wants you to come to him with that heart that has been broken from abuse. He wants you to come to him from that heart that has been damaged. He wants you to come to him with a mind that has been messed up through uh, mentally and physically and verbal abuse. He wants you to come to him as you are. He wants you to come to him. It, I don't care how far down in that pit you'd have been homeless or under a bridge. God wants you to come to him because he's ready to heal your soul. So Christians, I'm telling you, it's time to quit putting Jesus in this box. And most of all, it's time to quit putting ministers in box because we 
should be and pastors, we should be the leaders of our community. We should be the ones that stand up and speak out. We should be the ones that get things corrected and, and, and find out what's going on in our neighborhoods. I see so many churches now in the hood. The doors are closing. The, everybody's leaving out the hood. Everybody's going to venture out. But then you get mad when pastors like Joel Osteen and, and some of the well-known pastors from like Fallbrook they come into the community and they try to find out what's going on in the community to help the community. And there are other pastors that, that does this, you know, that, that have nice churches and they're trying to come in the community and work with the people in the community. But we also have the churches that's in a community that's not even helping in the community. But you have your church doors open on Sunday mornings for somebody to come give a, a, their tithe and offering and all these other offers that you all done created. And the doors never open up again during the week. There's a problem with that. Don't get jealous at the man that's coming into your hood, helping people in the hood and throwing block parties and, and helping rebuild the neighborhood. Don't get mad at him. What is your church doing in the hood? So what I'm coming at you today, the title of our subject today is don't put Jesus in the box. Don't put Jesus in a box. Because he's not a man to be put in a box. He's a man to work with anybody, talk to anybody that stepped on the face of this earth. No matter what background you come from, what color, rich, poor, wealthy, Republican, Democrat. He don't care if you're black, white, orange, green, purple, blue, yellow, slanted eyes, slanted up eyes. No eyes, with eyes, with hands, feet, no feet in a wheelchair, walking correctly, walking straight. He do not care who you are, whatever you done been through. If you've been a homosexual or you done been a prostitute or you have been a thief murderer or you done been a person addicted to drugs, alcohol, or you've been a wife beater or you've been on the other end of it or you the... Or you the person that curse a lot of you the person that's damaging the temple that God created. If that's you, God wants you. So don't put him in the box. So tonight, the way we're gonna do our Bible study tonight is we're gonna go through some uh people and and things that Jesus dealt with. As a pastor and as a minister, as I say again. People try to put us in the box. Oh, don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about this. Jesus dealt with that. Don't, don't talk about this. Only talk about what's happening in the church. Well, what's happening in the church is the reality of life because we see it coming into the church. It always has been there. And the reality of what's going out in the world is part of the church because we are the light and the salt of the world, right? So if we're trying to keep it in the four walls of the church, what are we doing? We're excluding the world. God said, go out into the world and preach the gospel. That's what the word of Jesus said. So we're going to go through some a list and I'm going to give you this Bible study to, tonight. And I want you all to get these scriptures, look them up, read them. And there may be more. These are not all. I'm just going to give you some. But we're going to pray before we get started. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you help us and guide us and lead us, dear Lord. And we ask you to watch over our country, dear Lord, and touch our president and the leaders of our country. Touch their hearts and minds and souls, Republicans and Democrats, dear Lord. Right now, dear Lord, I know that you're getting tired of seeing all this back and forth. One side pulling one way, the other side is pulling another, dear Lord. There has got to be a solution to all of this, dear Lord. Whatever we're going through, dear Lord, we ask you to help us all across the world, not only in this country, but all across the world that you created, dear Lord. We ask you to touch the hearts of the pastors and the leaders of the churches, the mothers, the missionaries, and the elders, and the congregation of all churches, dear Lord. We ask you to watch over our families and our children and bless them and touch them and guide them and lead them and help them prosper in all areas of life, dear Lord. There's so many people that's sick, dear Lord, physically, mentally, heartbroken, going through a divorce. Somebody's about to walk on somebody right now. Somebody's one second away from committing suicide, dear Lord. Somebody's one second away from being homeless. Somebody's one second away from signing some divorce papers, dear Lord. We ask you to touch their minds and heal them. There's somebody one second away of 
taking that last injection into their arm or putting that white powder up their nose, dear Lord, or just buying something off the street that they don't even know and they one second away from losing their life, dear Lord. I ask you to guide them and protect them and cover them with your blood, dear Lord. I ask you to mend marriages, dear Lord. I ask you to mend relationships between children and their parents, dear Lord. I ask you to guide everyone and bless everyone in all areas of life, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, as I pray, amen. All right, let's get down into this subject tonight. I told you, don't put Jesus in the box. Because these are the people that Jesus touched. The touch of Jesus. What kind of people did Jesus associate with? Whom did he consider important enough to touch? Here we see many of the people Jesus came to know. Some reached out to him. He reached out to them all. See, he reached out to them all. It says some reached out to him, but he reached out to them all. Regardless of how great or unknown, rich or poor, young or old, sinner or saint, Jesus cares equally for all people. No person is beyond the loving touch of Jesus Christ. No person is beyond the loving touch of Jesus Christ. I don't care where you come from because Almighty God created everybody and everything on this earth. So the separation thing that we're trying to do, that's Satan. That is Satan at his best work to separate people. No matter, because once this skin color comes off here, you get shot or get stabbed. Up under there, that blood, that blood's gonna come out red. So all this hatred that's going on, we need to stop. But you're not gonna keep me in a box. I'm gonna teach and preach and talk reality of what's going on in the Bible and also in the world, because the Bible ain't nothing but a mere reflection of what of the world of what's going on. And it's a mirror reflection of you. This is why a lot of people don't like to read the Bible because they don't want to find themselves in the Bible. So we're going to get started. And as we go, I want you all to write these scriptures down. And if I have to repeat them, I will. We're going to start. Here are some people that Jesus touched, talked to, and dealt with on a day-to-day -day base. Every day, every week, probably every month, every year. Who knows? These are the people that he touched, especially in the last three years of his life. A despised tax collector. You will find that scripture in Matthew 9.9. 9. An insane hermit. You will find that scripture in Mark 5 verses 1 through 15. Jesus dealt with Roman governors. That's found in Mark 15 verses 1 through 15. A young boy. Mark 9, 17 through 27. He dealt with prominent religious leaders. You will find that in John 3, verses 1 through 21. Jesus dealt with a homemaker. You will find that scripture in Luke 10, 38 through 42. He dealt with an expert in religious laws. Now, this man must have forgot who Jesus was. So Jesus dealt with this so-called expert in religious laws that thought he knew everything, but he really didn't. You'll find that in Matthew 22, 35. Jesus dealt with criminals. Hmm. You'll find that in Luke 23, 40 through 43. Jesus dealt with a criminal. Hmm. That's a label that somebody put on you. Because once you get under his blood, that word is X'd out. You become a child of God. He dealt with the synagogue leaders. As we say, the leaders of the church today. He dealt with them. So, hey, that means that I have to deal with them too. If something ain't right, we got to figure out what's going on. What kind of doctrine are you teaching? Because if you're not teaching the true doctrine of God, we need to discuss this. 
I'm looking from the outside in. And there are a lot of things that I'm hearing from some of these pastors. I'm, I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Y'all teaching, y'all teaching hate and division. You're not teaching unity and love. You will find that. He talked to leaders in the synagogue in Mark 5, 22. Hmm, he had the fishermen. You know who those fishermen was. Look them up. Matthew 4, 18 through 20. Uh, he talked with kings. He talked with a king. And that's found in Luke 23, 7 through 11. He talked with a poor widow. These are people that he touched and talked with. Luke 7, verses 11 through 17. And Luke 21, verses 1 through 4. Hmm. He talked to a Roman captain. You'll find that verse in Luke 7, 1 through 10. Jesus talked with a group of children. All right. So he was also a youth minister. So he talked to a group of children. Uh, that's be found in Mark 10, 13 through 16. He talked to a prophet found in Matthew 3. Uh, he talked to an adulterous woman in John 8, verses 1 through 11, who's the name? What? Mary Magdalene. So, oh, he dealt with prostitutes, too. He dealt with people that cheats on their husbands and their wives. So he dealt with a lot of things going on in that area. He dealt with the pimps, too. They had pimps back then, too. The Jewish high council, he dealt with them. He spoke with them. He touched them. That's found in Luke 22, 66 through 71. Hmm. He talked to a sick woman. You'll find that in Mark 5, verses 25 to, through 34. She touched him. The blood stopped. Bam. What happened? She was healed. Her faith is what got her healed. He talked to the rich man. That'll be found in Mark 10, 17 through 23. Don't ever think you get so rich that you don't ever need Jesus in your life because you need him. Other than that, you're going to be lonesome. There's a void. We see how many rich people are committing suicide today. That's because there is a void in their life. He talked to a blind beggar. Mark 10, uh, verse 46. Hmm. A blind beggar. Hmm. And I believe that man got healed according to what I read. He talked to Jewish political leaders. That's found in Mark 12, verses 13. So, pastors, leaders, you need to start talking to the political leaders out here on both sides. Because, you know, it's a lot of corruption and it's a lot of nonsense going on on both sides. So, somebody needs to talk to these political leaders that's up in the White House and representing these states and these cities and these counties and, and these local areas, we, we, we need to start talking to them, baby, because it's getting crazy. You got people out here making, telling people to make threats against uh, people in society and this and that. If they support this party and stuff, it's getting haywire. So pastors, where are you? Where are you now? Where are you now, Jesse Jackson? Where are you now, Al Sharpton? Where are the black pastors at now? Where's any pastor at now to go out and talk to these leaders and say, hey, that's not what God say do. God say pray for our leaders. God say we must pray for our leaders. That's a commandment. We must honor and obey the authority over us. Now, he didn't say go along with them if they wrong. But you have the right to protest to do whatever you do, but you do not make threats to people and to make threats on other people's lives. That's wrong. This is why I want to hear ministers stand up and talk. This is why I want to hear pastors stand up and talk about what's going on in their city, in their state, in, in the country of the United States. You got your doors open for everything else. It's time to open the doors up to talk about what's going on in your community. We have the legal right to do that. Your church is in the neighborhood. Find out what's going on in your community. Find out what's needed in your community, in your neighborhood, in your district. Weed out these people that's not doing what, what's need to be done. Quit voting for people that's not doing anything. Vote for somebody that's going to do something. So Jesus dealt with Jewish political leaders. You're not going to keep me in a box. You're not. You didn't have to keep Jesus in the box. You need to get him out the box and use the knowledge that Jesus had, which is in this Bible right here. A group of women that is found in Luke 8 verses 2 and 3. Okay, Jesus dealt with a group of women. So 
A man can talk, a minister can talk to a group of women. I wouldn't prefer that you talk to a woman by themselves. I would think that you would need a witness or a couple of witnesses because the way things go on these days, they might come up with some type of accusation to put on you. Uh, Jesus had to deal with the high priest. That's found in Matthew 26, verses 62 through 68. He had to deal with the high priest. So, Never don't dare ever think that other pastors can't deal with other pastors. When you're wrong, you're wrong. When you're right, you're right. Now, let's get it right. Okay? Uh, he dealt with an outcast with leprosy. That'll be found in Luke 17, uh, verses 11 through 19. So, he dealt with the outcast with leprosy. Oh, he dealt with a government official. That's found in June 4, 46 through 53. You see, Jesus had to deal with government officials as well. He had to talk to these leaders of these countries and these nations and say, hey, look, that's wrong. This is what needs to be done. I got scripture to back it up as it was written. These are the laws that my father wrote. These are the laws that Moses enhanced from God to put on this tablet and these 613 laws that we have to deal with. This is what we have to deal with here. And some of these laws still exist today. Even though Jesus came into the world, as Matthew 5.17 say, he did not come to abolish the law. He just came to fulfill it. He didn't come to destroy it. He just came to fulfill it. But God gave man knowledge to create things and also things that was already established by God to follow. And we have to do that. So Jesus dealt with government officials as well. And I'm going to tell you that scripture again. It's found in John 4, 46 through 53. He dealt with a young girl. That'll be found in Mark 5, 41 and 42. He dealt with the traitor. See, Jesus dealt with a lot of different things. That'll be found in John 13, verses 1 through 3 and 27. He dealt with the helpless and the paralyzed man. See, he had to deal with that too. So that's why I'm in this uh, handicapped and disabled ministry that I'm going uh, to help out, which is called We Are People, because we are people too. And the pastor of that, her name is Pastor Ruby Dixon. And that'll be found in Mark 2, verses 1 through 12. An angry mob of soldiers and guards, guards, I mean, not guards, guards, an angry mob of soldiers and guards. He dealt with that too. That'll be in John 18, verses 3 through 9. He dealt with the woman. From a foreign land. See, Jesus had to deal with people from other parts of the world and other parts of the, the, this land here. That would be found in Mark 7, 25 and 30. He dealt with the doubting follower, which was Thomas. He just doubted that Jesus was the Messiah. He wanted to see this man that came off the cross. He wanted to see the piercing in the side. He wanted to see the hole in his hands. He wanted to see the, the holes in his feet. He wanted to see this man that was raised from the dead called Jesus. He didn't believe that that was him. He wanted to see this was him and Jesus had to show him, this is me, man. I'm here. You see these holes right here? You see what them people holding me on the cross? See what they done to me, man? You don't see these holes right here? And you still have doubt, but we still have Christians. We have authentic Christians that still have doubt about what Jesus can do. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's a, he's a, he's, he's a protector. You can go to him for all things. Never doubt. Even though sometimes we doubt. Just be real. We doubt. We don't believe. We lose it. We become in that atheist uh, mind for a split second or for a moment. We doubt. Let's just be real. An enemy who hated him. Oh, let me go back to that doubt and follower. That was found in John 20, 24 through 29. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited here because when I start talking about the word of God, I get excited. The doubting follower was found in John 20, verses 24 through 29. An enemy who hated him. That's found in Acts 9, verses 1 through 9. An enemy who hated Jesus sit and talk with an enemy who hated him. Mm, that sounds like Saul, whose name got changed to hmm, Paul. Right? Hmm. Yeah, sound pretty good, huh? 
So Jesus even loved his enemies enough to sit and talk with them and touch them and lay hands on them and pray for them. So when I hear people say, I'm not praying for that person. I don't like that person. I don't like this 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 leader. I don't like this. I ain't praying for them. I ain't. I, ain't, I don't honor that. that, that. But that ain't what God say. So that means that you don't know God. He even dealt with a Samaritan woman, a woman that was half his culture. I think a Samaritan is like a Samaritan half Jewish. He dealt with her. He was only supposed to deal with Jews, right? No, 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 no. Jesus dealt with Gentiles and everything else. <laughs> you came his way. He broke, off. He, he broke the laws that he came to fulfill. They was telling him, oh, you can't be talking to that woman. You can't heal that. You can't do things with that woman. You can't do nothing. Jesus said, I got this. I can touch anybody. I am the Messiah. I am the king. That ver That's uh, about the Samaritan woman is found in John 4, 1 through 26. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that today. I just want to give you all that list today. That's the Bible study for the day. Uh, I just want you all to be safe and be happy. And 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 let's 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 not get all tied up and caught up in all this media and and everything that's coming across. I mean, you should know the truth from a lie. You should know the truth from a lie. You know, our country is being blessed. People are, are working. People are, are still getting bonuses. People are able to send their kids to college. People are able to buy new homes, new cars. People are being blessed. Let, let's not follow the this cultural war that we got going on, you know, I don't know. If it's a cultural, spiritual war that's going on, but we're not fighting for any type of faith. If we can get more people involved in protesting for prayer to be back in school and for Bible curriculum to be back in school, I'm so tired of seeing everything else being protested. Why, why are you protesting abortion? That's an abomination of God in the way. You don't kill a child. You don't kill a fetus. I mean, do you have AIDS? Do you, was you raped? Uh, was, is it a life, death, life or death threat, something here? You don't kill something that is inside of you that have a heartbeat or a fetus that been, been and that's, that's, uh, even if it don't have a heartbeat, it's still something that God created. God sent it down through men into your womb. And we do have a forgiving God. He does knows that things happen in life. I can understand if a woman got raped. I can understand if a woman uh, got a disease that she couldn't get rid of that's going to hurt or kill or harm that child. I can understand if there was some type of incest or something going on. You know, God is a forgiving God. God is not this God that y'all trying to create him to be. Every little thing you do, you're going to go, he going to send you down to hell. No. He's a sensible God. So, you all just stay prayerful, you know, and, and just focus on God. Stay focused on Him because it, it's really getting crazy out here right now. And if you're not in the Word, you're going to be lost. I hope you all have a nice day, and I hope you all enjoyed the prayer and Bible study. And may God bless you. Thank you.